And that was uh, a speedy tour through what is, I think, a, a, a complex range of issues um, that befits essentially a, a, you know, a complex sector and a, and a complex challenge around healthcare delivery. And as we know, this is a, a field beset with asymmetries of information, powerful professional interests. Um, one only has to look, I guess, at the passage of healthcare reform efforts in the US and our own attempts here in the UK to know that this is profoundly uh, complex. Um, Alan, before I pass over to you, I mean, I think what you've done, Maureen, and with your co-author is kind of really offer us a way of framing the issues and getting underneath some of them in a very uh, systematic way, and hopefully we'll debate some of those things. I also want to draw people's attention to what I'm sure you picked up on, a few references to some, some points of contention and debate about healthcare delivery in your presentation. You know, there was references to models of contracting out, to models of formal charging, which are things which I know are points of discussion and often heated discussion in debates about delivering effective healthcare in poor countries. And maybe we can come back to some of those issues. Alan, over to you. Uh, thank you very much, Alison. Um, it's always a pleasure to come to um, ODI. It's such a large and enthusiastic audience <laughs> at the end of the day. And it's always a pleasure to discuss Maureen's work. Um, I've spent 25 years trying to trip Maureen up. We first got to know each other on the squash court. Uh, she, she was very young at the time. Uh, and, and, I, and, I, and I'm still famous. And so were you. <laughs> well, uh, so, uh, this is a really uh, very important um, issue. And it's also a very, very perplexing one for us to know how we're going to get our hands around it. Uh, I mean, the story that Maureen has given us is that uh, we, you know, we have a sector that starts with inputs, it gets some outputs, and what we really want are the outcomes. And the problem that we've got, we've started to develop a whole series of ways of focusing on the outcomes. The problem with anything that is at all general, at all um, uh, broad, like um, uh, sort of the forms of health system, uh, the outcomes are bounced about by all sorts of random factors, and so we have almost no um, attribution. And what Maureen is urging us to do is to sort of go back into the process and ask, what about the intermediate stages? We actually aren't interested, per se, in any of the things that she's been talking about, but we believe that they are ways of improving the outcome. And so while I, I think she's exactly right, we must remember that one of the problems we've had with evaluation over um, the last 40, 50 years is that it has focused sometimes too much on outputs rather than outcomes. Was the money spent on uh, 55 doctors? Did uh, you know, the health, uh, you know, did, they, did the clinic cover the correct square yardage and so on? And so while I think Maureen is exactly right to bring us back to this sort of internal technology that we are interested, that we, we're interested in and which is very important, we do have to remember that in a sense the issue uh, is still broader. Now, medical research, as I've particularly learned since I've been working in DFID, where my chief scientist colleague is a medic, um, is, is a very interesting area where random control trials really are the way of doing things. And random control trials are what economists refer to as entirely reduced forms. Now, you start with something over here and you measure something over there and say, oh, well, look, they went up together, went down together, you know, point proved. You can prove it because you are setting up the experiment in such a way that, in a sense, nothing else could be influencing from here to here. The real world is much more difficult. But also, if we want to do policy, we have to get inside those reduced forms. Uh, it may be that uh, for a simple issue of drug treatment, just a simple give the people the pill, see what happened, don't give the pill to other people, see what happened to them, and compare it. But for the sort of complicated things that we're talking about with health systems, but also education systems, almost all the places where we tend to talk about governance, the process is much more complicated and we have to get inside and understand why things are happening. And it seems to me that Maureen is urging us, pulling us uh, along into looking at this technology. I've got uh, basically three sets of questions that, uh, that I want to pose uh, to which I don't really have answers. I mean, the first is, in a sense, what I've set up already is just, well, how do we know? Uh, many, uh, many of the studies that the full paper refers to, which I do commend the paper, many of these studies have done quite careful experimentations to show us that tinkering with the incentive system in this circumstance and so on 
has a positive or has no effect. You know, we, has, we, can, we can make a statement about that. So in some cases, we do know about one chain in the linkage. But as I said before, we actually are, in the end, wanting to know about the whole thing. And we still have uh, this sort of great uncertainty about how does all of this add up into uh, improved outcomes. Now, all of the measures that Maureen has, I think, introduced us to seem very sensible and they're very, very attractive to sit down and say, yeah, well, well, it makes sense that the doctors ought to turn up. But you do have to get them to work when they turn up as well. I mean, turning up is necessary. It might not be sufficient. So I, you know, I think we do have to be um, uh, sort of still keep challenging ourselves rather than thinking, as uh, sometimes happens, you know, that we found three indicators and that will sort the problem out. Um, now, you know, the UK is the perfect place to come and talk about <laughs> indicators in the health system. I mean, you know, our health system and our newspapers are exhausted from uh, this constant talk about uh, sort of targets and monitoring and so on. Two observations on that. I mean, I, I haven't read the study, but uh, two weeks ago it was announced that indeed um, health performance seemed to be very much better in England, where these targets have been taken seriously, than in Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland, where they had not. And if that is the case, it's as in a big vindication of what actually had been a process that was uh, increasingly coming under, under uh, I guess, uh, falling into disrepute. Uh, so I think that even within Britain, where we hopefully have the means to measure a lot of these things, we don't face anything like the amounts of corruption, so we can trust some of the measurements. Uh, there is, in a sense, uh, you know, the, uh, um, uh, the jury is still out. Now, one of the other things that is plain with targets is, unless you can write a complete contract, which you can't in health, you've got the great danger of unintended consequences that people focus on the three things that you're measuring, and all the rest, which are still important, uh, maybe even necessary for the outcome, uh, just, just don't get delivered. And so that's another, in a sense, another warning to say that you can't just fix, well, don't believe that fixing one of these things fixes the problem. You've got to fix 40 of them, 50 of them, and then go back and start all over again. You have to sort of move the whole set up uh, together. So it seems to me that you know, sort of there is still this question about how do we know about the linkages? How do we know they're the right set of linkages? How do we um, um, work out um, you know, when, we've, when we've scored a goal? Uh, the second issue is, uh, in a sense, very similar, and that is how do we prioritize? And not only is it a question of high, I mean, this paper is about prioritizing uh, within the health functions. Um, I'm uh, an economist by training. Uh, economists have been very interested in so-called growth diagnostics over the last few years, where whether you accept all the details of that as a technique for thinking about developing country economies, one of the things it's taught us is lists of 80 things for developing countries to do are not very useful. You have to prioritize. You have to work out what you need to do first. So I think it's a very interesting question within this broad range of things that Maureen has presented, and I would be interested to know whether you have any advice. But you know, are the three key things? Is the one area that we should be focusing on first? Um, I'm sure it's case specific, but uh, do we know how it's case specific? Yeah, and then of course we do need to consider um, uh, you know, between the health functions and between health and other things and, and so on. We also need, of course, to prioritize research. Uh, many of these things are still cloudy, and so we've got to decide whether the effort is going to go on this or that. And again, I would be interested to know whether you feel more in that there are sort of, you know, some fairly obvious things that we ought to get on and test, as well as get on and do. Uh, the, the final set of comments that I want to make, um, in a sense, is just to uh, open the question up to a much broader level and say, why is it like this? I mean, if we know all of these things, I mean, after all, uh, Maureen's quoted 50 studies about something that works or something that doesn't work. You know, if we know all of this, why doesn't it happen? Why do we let it go on? And this, it seems to me, is a very important issue um, because, in some sense, if you want to change things, uh, you have to start to work out who has an interest in them changing and who has an interest in them not changing and so on. Uh, it's not very satisfying to say that um, health workers are just irrational or even that health workers are venal. Uh, that really doesn't take us very far. One's got to ask what's going on in their lives uh, that makes them behave like this, and uh, can we easily change it to move their behavior uh, in a particular direction? As Maureen was saying, it's about uh, incentives. 
Uh, there's also a question, uh, particularly for uh, low-income countries, of capacity constraints. Uh, while many of these things uh, that one might do look to be sort of simple and straightforward, um, they look less simple and straightforward to do um, honestly, um, certainly or competently, if you have a critical shortage of uh, professional manpower. Um, I gather that Paddy Ashdown used to say of um, his time in Bosnia that it wasn't médecins sans frontières that he wished for, it was accountants sans frontières. And he said what he really needed was a bunch of accountants to come in and try and do the public financial management. Um, so, so what else might be going on? I think we've, uh, Alison has sort of sketched some of these things here. The operators, the, uh, you know, the doctors themselves might be too powerful, other interest groups. But of course, that's probably not the only thing either. One does have to ask um, uh, sort of about the next layer up. Who is managing these systems and what are their incentives um, in, in getting uh, the thing right? One observation that I think nearly all governance work starts off with and then very often ignores as articles proceed is the statement that, I mean, in most countries you might find some things that are a bit better than others, some things that are a bit worse. But by and large, we think uh, failures of governance are pretty pervasive. It's not that you have just fabulous education systems and an absolutely atrocious health system. It is, in fact, that you know, nearly all of, um, of what's going on in governance has a sort of general uh, national um, uh, um, uh, sort of dimension to it. So I do think it's quite important at some stage to ask, how much is, so, so to what extent should we spend our effort on making the health system an uh, absolute island of probity and efficiency? And to what extent might we say, well, look, if we can get 20% better here, then we'll move on and try and sort something else out. And, you know, and in five years, if we've raised the general level, we'll come back and have another go at the health service. Um, when I think about uh, how does DFID uh, react to these things, it's not an area in which I claim expertise. One of the things which, um, uh, one of the mantras that we have in Palace Street is the importance of a community monitoring. Um, asking the community what it is they think they want and trying to engage their enthusiasm uh, in trying to get it. It's probably useful, but as uh, Maureen points out, the evidence actually is a lot less um, persuasive than one might wish. One might think the really obvious thing is ask people what they want, say, well, we'll equip you with the tools to get it, and that ought to solve the problem. Um, again, there are all sorts of social issues, um, capture, um, lack of capacity to sort of handle the arguments, uh, and so on. Um, but I think you know, we need to be very careful of sort of simple solutions like that. And then finally, um, it's also, um, I've had explained to me at times, that what we need to do is charge NGOs with monitoring. Um, and that might, you know, they come with um, at least access perhaps to more capacity than the average uh, community. Their hearts, we hope, are in the right places. But of course, to charge NGOs with doing the monitoring raises just um, the accountability issue at one remove. Um, and you know, to whom and um, are they in fact accountable to the external donors? So it does seem to me that uh, once we start to ask these questions about why is it like this and how can we start to address it, um, it doesn't get easier, it actually gets more difficult. So I'm sorry that that is a catalogue of unanswered, well, at least for me, unanswered <laughs> questions, maybe you can help. Um, but it is a very um, important issue, and does seem to me to be an issue that is both very interesting and one which feels as if we ought to be able to make some progress on. You know, in a sense, chip, 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 we will <laughs> gradually make things better. And that's very attractive, given you know, how unfashionable lots of bits of the aid industry is to feel that you know, here is something that we could do, uh, that, that I, I actually find uh, uh, rather more. Right. Thank you very much, Alan. Um, <laughs>